Now that we've got our account set up with Amazon S3 and we have that integrated into our Cloudberry Explorer so we can basically use our S3, now we want to create some buckets. And if you're not really familiar with what a bucket is, look at it like it's a folder or a directory. Basically it will contain the information or the files that you upload into it or that you add to it. And a bucket is also similar to like domain names in that there is only one in the world with that particular bucket name. Just like domain names, once a domain name is created, that is the only one of its kind in the world. There are no two domain names alike. You know, snowflakes, fingerprints, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and create a bucket by clicking on this blue cube here and gives us this box it and of course as we had mentioned earlier as far as choosing the bucket location default you can do that up here under tools and options but basically this is depending upon where you live or where you are closest to if you're closer to Europe check this box if you're closer to the US check this box and then just give it a name now there are certain rules as far as the bucket names are concerned such as Folder names cannot contain a forward slash or a backward slash. They are automatically removed. Bucket names can only contain lowercase letters, numbers, periods, and dashes. Bucket names must start with a number or letter. Bucket names must be between 3 and 255 characters long, but they suggest that it should be closer to 63 characters in length, but you got that you know flexibility there. Bucket names cannot be an IP address. Bucket names should not contain underscores. Bucket names should not end with a dash. And dashes cannot appear next to periods. For example, my dash period bucket dot com and my period dash bucket are both invalid. So you don't have to worry too much about the rules because if you put something in the bucket name here that is in violation to those rules the world will not come to a screeching halt you'll just get a little error message for example like this and again remember like domain names there there are no two alike so if we were to say put in uh, my domain chances are pretty good somebody else already has this and if you violate any of those rules I just mentioned then this is what's going to happen no big deal you click on this it'll give you some information about what the problem is but probably either somebody already has that don't that bucket name almost called it a domain name the problem is that somebody probably already has that bucket name or you're in violation of one of those little bitty rules I told you about so I'll just redo it come on back up here click on the new bucket name and let's go with something arbitrary just for the sake of this example uh, start with a letter or a number uh, how about h4 f i dot c o m now I'm doing this ending it with a dot com for a reason good I was hoping nobody in the right, right mind would have that as a name but who knows they could have but if you uh, have domain names then what you want to do is as soon as you can create bucket names duplicating your domain names so if your domain is gardenersprofit.com come in and create a bucket name gardenersprofit.com and there's a reason behind that that we'll get into in an upcoming video when we deal with DNS and C names uh, some pretty cool stuff you can do but anyway if you've got domain names go ahead and do that if you do not have domain names then of course name it whatever you want based on what information is going to be in there now once you have a bucket name you can also create folders inside of there we just double click on that to open it up and you can see here the path that's taking place as we go deeper into this bucket you can click on this here to create a new folder within that bucket and now here these folder names do not fall under the same rules as bucket names you can start it off with a capital you can have dashes or underscores or whatever else you want in there you can have multiple there can be multiple folder names throughout the world okay again this does not fall un under the same rules as bucket names there we go now then once you've got a folder in here and this also holds true for the bucket names too whenever you want to have others outside of yourself have access to that information you can then adjust the rights or the permissions and you do that by right clicking on the folder or bucket and under ACL 
you want ACL settings and you can create those permissions or you can adjust those permissions to where they have access to all or some in other words they can write or they can read you can create additional well, here let's just take a look you can add for example if you want just everybody in there because right now the owner moi, has all of these permissions and if we were to add somebody else in here clicking on add this user has to have an Amazon S3 account and you can use either their email address under that account or their Amazon S3 ID and by doing that in here or adding that information in here clicking on OK they would then be added in this row here then you could assign them permissions to this particular content or this particular folder bucket what have you by doing so either full control here again do so at your own risk or just read and or just write and that brings us to the end of this video really that's how you create buckets that's how you can assign permissions and that's also how you can create folders inside of the buckets and a little bit about the rules insofar as creating your buckets and folders thank you very much for watching and have a great day